Solo leveling is reaching its conclusion here very soon, and because of it, a lot of people are curious about other comics that are similar to solo leveling, have a similar vibe or art style, and I'm happy to say that Omniscient Reader is as good, if not better, than solo leveling, in my opinion. I've talked about it a couple times here on the channel, and I recently caught up once again, and oh my gosh, dude, this comic is probably my favorite comic, aside from Tower of God. This thing gets better and better. The art is insane from start to finish. The action is so good, and I never know what's going to come, although I always know that the boy Dokja Kim is always going to come through, or these new characters are going to join him, or whatever. Like, I just don't know how it's going to happen. I don't know what kind of scenarios are being plotted by the Dokebi, and, you know, what kind of monsters are going to show up. It's always entertaining, no matter what. That's such a huge accomplishment. I've never felt a sense of awe, always, with, with a comic like this, you know, where it, it almost feels flawless in my mind. It's captured my attention. It doesn't feel like I'm a hundred chapters in, you know? It feels like I've barely scratched the very tip of the surface of what this story has to offer. What I love about Omniscient Reader is that it captures the style that solo leveling gives you, where you have your main protagonist who gets to level up his abilities and is thrust into different scenarios and has to overcome these trials to get stronger in this sort of world that resembles a video game in certain ways, where you have attributes and experience and items. But the reason why I think Omniscient Reader sort of tops it, at least in my opinion, is it adds a huge layer and a huge focus on constellations or gods. These gods that choose participants and people to sponsor. And then the players have to appease their constellations and make sure they're satisfied. And it adds this entire layer that I think makes this comic stand out so much. But what's really interesting is our main protagonist, Dokcha Kim, is able to sort of manipulate this system. He's someone who has read this story before. He knows what's going to come up and what's going to happen. And so he's able to use that to his advantage, manipulate the gods, you know, manipulate the, the Dokebi and everything, manipulate the characters of the novel and the new players in this game, and it's just so much fun to read. If you haven't read it already, I recommend going and checking it out because I'm going to talk about a few spoilers from the recent chapters. One of my favorite characters is Suyong Han, the plagiarizer, because she was a character that I was like, okay, I can see her being an arc villain, you know, someone who pretends to be the author and has these interesting avatar powers, but dude, this character has stuck around as what seems to be a new main character, and I'm all for it because not only is she gorgeous and hilarious, but she's also just got some unique, like, personality traits and powers and her interactions with Sangha and everything, which, by the way, freaking Sangha? Like, I'm a Huiwan guy, like, Huiwan's my girl, but bro. Dude, I, I don't know what to expect with, with Sangha. Like, is she, like, Mount Olympus's, like, chosen one? Because it's really implied that she, she has these different attributes from various constellations, which we've never really seen before outside of a very couple special cases, you know? So it's very strange, but, like, I remember Huiwan as the girl with the string, and now she's, like, an assassin ninja freaking killing people, hopping around with her strings. I'm like, is this the same character? But it also brings up like a very tragic sort of result of this whole like, apocalypse, right? Sangha used to be someone who very, she hesitated to even kill a little bit. Like she, she would struggle with that idea and that concept. And now she's doing it with zero hesitation, murdering tens of people, hundreds of people. And it's good development because like these people need, you know, it's, it's hard obviously, but in this scenario, she's doing what she has to do, but it's still just really tragic to see. But I have to say my favorite part about the newest chapters of Omniscient Reader are the chapters that revolve around Dokcha's uh, character development. Because, you know, Dokcha's always been a great MC, but I feel like in a lot of these comics that sort of mirror this solo leveling style, the MC is kind of like, okay, the MC. You know, a lot of times we don't even remember their name because it's just uh, the main character. That's it. But in a story like this, Dokcha is our main character, but he isn't the main character of the apocalypse or whatever, right? So it's really interesting. So that already sets him apart, but his character development revolving around his trauma, I mean, dude, what? It's so awesome. I mean, I didn't expect it at all, but it tells you that someone who bullies, someone who picks on you and singles you out and treats you like garbage, even 
a decade later, that still affects you, right? He's someone who was way stronger than his bully when he re-encountered him, but that trauma was still there and he still struggled. He still was shaken up by it. I really like the way they handled that. It wasn't like, oh, I'm stronger than you, so I'm just gonna beat you up. It was like, no, I still have to get over that trauma that I experienced, and he might never truly get over it, but he can learn to deal with it and get better at coping with it. Like, that's some powerful stuff coming for our main character, who gets to learn that, and I don't know, I, I thought that was handled so well. It also brings up the point about the, the unique way that this comic brings about, like, the, the disciples or the prophets, the people who have read the story already. Obviously, Dokja Kim is the main one because he read the entire thing. And as far as we know, he's the only person who's read the entire thing, right? But what's interesting is that other people, they get to, you know, they're bullying him and they accidentally get to read one chapter. Or someone just reads the beginning. Or even someone that he talked to about the story. They have an advantage and they count. At least some of them do, right? The, the bully, for example, who read one chapter, he counts as like someone who read part of the story. And I don't know, that's such a unique way of handling it that I didn't, I never even considered or thought about. Not to mention that person that is masked and he, you know, Doctor was surprised about who it is. I'm very curious, is that his, his ex-girlfriend that he would just kind of ramble on about his story? Was it family member, you know? I have no idea who she is, but he clearly knows. And the comic likes to keep secrets, which is like, a double-edged sword because I love it, but I also hate it. The new designs, bro. I feel like we've gotten a lot of human characters that all look amazing. We got some monster designs that of course look amazing. But now we're meeting characters that are literal demon humanoids. People from Kronos, dude. Lycaon? I don't know how to pronounce his name. Lycaon? Lycaon? Mr. Wolf, dude? Freaking awesome design, bro. I love him. I love him. He's, a, he's an adorable wolf man that's also a badass, okay? I mean, what's not to love? The designs are gorgeous. Uh, even, like, the insect demon that they were fighting and everything. The new characters as well. Even the human characters. Like, they're just as good and they're always unique. Always standing out. I don't know how the author does this, but you're constantly meeting new characters, even if they're extras, and they always manage to stand out. Not to mention, anytime we get a glimpse at the gods, you know, the constellations, I mean, my breath is literally taken away. Twists and turns, I love how the Dokebi all have different personalities. Some of them are very easy to manipulate, but others are genuinely intimidating and they know how to work a crowd. It's just awesome, man. Omniscient Reader is a 10 out of 10 for me. No complaints. I don't think there's a single flaw with this story, and if you haven't already checked it out, well, I just spoiled a lot, but hopefully you do because it's really freaking awesome. Huge thank you to Webtoon for sponsoring this video. Check the link down below. If you're someone who this sounds interesting to you, maybe you were into solo leveling, but now that it's ending, you want to read something else. Omniscient Reader, man, you're not going to regret reading this comic. The link is down below. Shout out to Webtoon for, again, sponsoring the video. And with that being said, I will see you in my next Webtoon review. Take care.